All right, good afternoon. You guys are doing really well today. Welcome to Nail School with Greg Salo. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some dimensional work with acrylic. I'm going to be working with Speed Clear. And we are going to be working, let's see, with some of these amazing glitters that we have inside here. So let's go ahead and just break out maybe some uh, <clears throat> mint icy mylar. Um, and let's see, maybe some uh, banana strawberry, right? So as you can see, there is an enormous amounts of color to be able to work with. Um, what we want to be able to do when we are basically creating uh, custom looks is we want to <clears throat> kind of, uh, first of all, create the, um, the mix. And what I like to do is take some speed clear. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in, right? And then, you know, look, you could either mix it in um, to the jar or you could just use it straight. Um, if you're, if you're going to be mixing it in, you just have to remember that like with as fine as it is, let's say you go ahead and put in, I'd say that much, right? It, you can see how kind of chunky this is. Um, just, you know, just to make you guys aware, um, if I was to mix, if I was to mix all of this, um, you're going to see that it, it's, again, it's going to be quite, quite chunky, right? So it, you know, if, if you're trying to pick this up, you're going to have this type of an issue. So, um, what I would do is kind of press it into the acrylic so that you have a lot less problems. Uh, let me show you guys how you're going to be able to work with it so that you have obviously a lot less issues uh, with some elements that are larger than, say, small confetti. So I'm going to take my electro file um, at a very, very low speed. And what we want to be able to do is just gently feather away the shine from corner to corner. Um, you're going to be using your electro file uh, very gently. So that again, there's no basically burning. There's no there's no pain. You want to be able to just lightly feather away the shine from the natural nail. It's kind of like if I was working on the inside of my wrist. You can see that I could tickle this away. It's a very gentle feeling. Um, that is exactly what you're going to do. Once we're done doing that, we're going to take swipe. We're going to clean the surface of the natural nail. You can see all that residue. This is going to be basically a way of dehydrating the natural nail and preparing it for protein bond application. Okay, so we're going to do two coats. Okay, one, you're going to do this on all 10 nails, and you're going to come back and you're going to do a second one. Um, for those of you guys that are interested in OWC, for those of you guys that are licensed or in school, get a hold of Ray Bracamontes here at home office, 1 800 777 9170, or you can get information online, www.nails.com, and you can get you guys information to take your nail game to the next level. All right, so we are going to take our form. We're going to place this on the bottom, and you're going to notice that when I actually pinch this, it actually creates what I call a handle. Um, once you have this handle in place, um, two ways of applying it. You're going to see you have a C curve. So if I'm holding this handle and I'm opening this up, this is going to allow me to get this basically underneath just like this right then i can secure the side or i could hold the arms and i could mount it underneath and then use my hand just to lift it up slightly so that it's touching the very very front end of the natural nail now when we're doing mylar you're going to notice again we're working with quite chunky pieces of of film um, what we want to be able to do is take our powder so i'm going to just try to get everything in frame so that you guys can see exactly what i'm doing i'm going to submerse my brush i'm going to tap i'm going to bounce 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 
right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly tap this off so that it doesn't get away from me. Once I set this down, I'm going to be able to walk it from the top of the bead so that I could get this as even right to the edge that I can. Now, I'm going to take this and I can just start pressing this into the wet acrylic. All right, so everything that is stuck to my brush is basically going to adhere. And once I'm done doing that, then I can actually start to kind of, you know, shape it, right? Even if I have small pieces that are, that are sticking out like this one, not a big deal. We can just kind of adjust that and make this work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this out long enough to create basically a really nice foundation, as you can see, okay? So if there's, if there's parts missing, then what you want to be able to do is use some wet acrylic, again, with a real light amount, and then use your brush, again, with it wet, as you can see, to pick this up and put it into place, right, to fill that missing space, okay? So what we've done is we've built a free edge, that is absolutely flush to the natural nail. You can see from the side, right, my growth channels, right, extend completely even. They don't hang below. They're completely straight going out. Um, you're going to be able to do the same thing with gel. We have, again, a one-week course going on right here, sharing all the information to take, again, their nail game to another level. Okay, so what we want to be able to do now, we're going to take a little bit of, of – of speed clear. I'm going to set this right behind and literally behind the free edge. I'm just going to kind of wipe that in place and then use a little bit more mylar, right, to kind of press this onto the nail plate. And you're going to notice that I can continue continuously grab more product and work it back onto the body. You can choose to use your brush to just kind of touch. You can see if I'm touching the Mylar as well, this is going to give me the ability again. I have to be really, really careful though because I don't want, take a look, if, if I just set this down to the surface, you have to remember, look at this, how easy it is for this to come off. I wanted to demonstrate that if you pick it up like this and set it down and then go like this, what you're doing is you're just setting the Mylar to the body. So don't do that. Take your brush, make sure that you get wet acrylic you're going to set that down onto the body so that you get a great bond to the natural nail. Then take the mylar and jam it into the wet acrylic as you're walking it back towards uh, the cuticle area. Now, as we get back towards the cuticle area, we have to make sure that we're not over applying it. Uh, I want to try to get out, right? I'm going to try to sprinkle out as many small pieces as I can. That way, when I get to the back end and I set this down, right, very, very wet, I want to make sure that we're going to be picking up, again, the, the, the smallest pieces so that I don't have to worry um, about it sticking out uh, the cuticle area. So continuously, like, kind of work, make sure your brush is wet. And what we're doing is we're just, again, getting tight small pieces to work as close to the back end of the cuticle as possible to create as much dimension as we can. And then once you actually have it basically coated, right, you have a thin kind of structure through the nail, you can build more dimension by taking more acrylic, right? And, and again, setting it over the pieces and constantly using the mylar to add to the surface. You have to remember that you're going to be creating a beautiful overlay, right? So all this is doing is, is filling space and kind of creating that beautiful jewel tone looking nail, okay? Now, once it's set, again, make sure that all the edges are kind of set. If you have to go back and get a little bit more, you could always get some wet acrylic, get smaller pieces, add it to the area you need to be able to fill. Um, once it's set, we're going to do a complete overlay. So it's always going to be the same exact thing. You're going to submerse your brush. You're going to lightly tap. You're going to bounce, 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 bounce inside the powder. I'm going to count one, two, three. And then because I'm working with speed, I'm going to be able to set this down at an angle and use the tip of my brush to walk around the perimeter of the nail as the product starts moving down 
over the stress area. Once it starts getting over the stress area, you're going to notice I'm using the tip of my brush to brush from the front of the bead all the way through creating a natural arch. Right? I can actually start using the body of the brush to move some of that acrylic down over the surface. Right, It's not basically running, but it's allowing me to kind of, again, balance my brush, move through the body, create, again, a beautiful overlay without getting away from me. And as I'm coming through and actually overlaying the whole entire surface, if there is excess, it will kind of fill um, all that kind of empty space uh, by just brushing it over the surface. If you needed to add products, what you could actually do is Take the tip of your brush, come down, get a small amount. And, and this always helps if you're missing product here on the front end. You could always brush back, right? So if I set my brush down this way and I pull back, it's going to be very easy for me to blend it into the existing body. Then I use my brush again to walk it from side to side to fill space. Now, if there is any basically acrylic sticking up, uh, you're going to be able to file that away with ease. But this is a great way of creating dimension. You can um, use color powders on the foundation layer. Um, if you're doing gel polish over the surface, uh, you, you could set this as your background. You can paint over the surface. You can kind of carve through the surface with your electric file to show dimension coming up from, from below. There's so many different ways to take advantage of actually creating foundation. And with the clear powder, as this grows out, it's going to be very easy to fill. It's almost, almost going to look like um, you have a mylar fade that's shooting up through the nail. Um, you know, again, uh, having different options uh, to be able to work and create custom looks is obviously the goal. And if you understand how to do it on a full set, then what it's going to take is just a little bit of understanding of maintenance so that when the product grows out, you're going to be able to do the same exact thing. So we, again, we need to wait till this sets. The back end is almost set. The front end is still drying out. Since I applied this right over a tip Initially, you're going to notice, right, as I bend that, there's still a little bit of flexibility on the free edge as I'm working. Okay, so while that's drying, let's go ahead and clear up. For those of you guys that struggle with your brush basically sticking, make sure that, again, you're constantly doing this, right? So I need to make sure that um, I'm pulling acrylic out of my brush and spinning it at the same exact time. This is how you're going to be able to rinse it and keep it clean. If you're having an issue um, with just monomer, then what you want to be able to use is this is an acetone polish remover. So what I'm going to do, you notice I'm holding the bottle up to my brush. I'm going to be able to pour a little bit inside my dish. I don't need a lot. I just need, again... You'll notice in my dish that there's only that much monomer, right? So if I set my brush down, it's only sitting to there. So I only feel a little bit more having a blend between monomer and acetone is going to pull out any acrylic that's in the brush hair. Also giving an opportunity to rinse it fully clean. Just make sure that you don't use this liquid when you are completely done. The last thing you need is uh, an acetone soaked monomer. Uh, which is going to set the acrylic at twice the speed. You do not want to, to work with that, okay? All right, this is starting to set. Again, we want to try to get a feel for this. Uh, the temperature in here is quite cool. I just want to make sure as I take this off, right? Uh, one of the things you could also work on is getting a, a spatula. This is what you're going to be using on mixing gel, and you can use that to kind of slide it in. I wanted to show you around the, the minute mark, right? As everything starts to dry, like the, the level of flexibility uh, that you're going to have, if you were to take the back end of a brush and just kind of wrap it around the free edge, you're going to be able to get a really, really tight uh, tip. Now, working on plastic is one thing. Um, if you guys are looking to build perfect C curves, uh, having the ability to come in and kind of pinch into the body right around here. Um, you have a lot of flexibility in the natural nail, right? So, you know, and, and again, you don't want to set it dead straight like this. What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to set it at an angle just like this, right? So it pinches right at that area. 
Um, is it necessary to pinch C-curve in all the time? It's not. Um, you will be able to bu build thinner nails, um, which is going to create a lot more strength. So as you can see, as this dries, you know, the lower arch, right, you know, is obviously hanging quite lower than the end of the growth channel. The growth channel goes out to here. So you could see in between, I have all that excess acrylic that's hanging off. One of the things you can do, um, which will help you tremendously before the acrylic dries is um, if, you're, if you're building sets and you have time, I'll just show you, right? Like I could actually take a cuticle nipper, right? Before this actually sets and just nip off some of that excess that I have right here on the side. This also gives the ability so that you don't have to file a tremendous amount, just, re just kind of releasing all that excess growth right here. Um, that way, um, when I'm actually hand filing through the surface, I don't have to worry about, you know, just like really putting a lot of like elbow grease into this. All right, so just got to wait till this dries. The, 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 the perfect setting time is literally, it's, it's quite hard now, but you have about three to four minutes um, of kind of molding time. Around the three minute mark, you have the, the time to actually mold it in place and then fully set at about four and a half to five minutes. Okay, so before you start filing, what we need to do is, we need to remove the basically edges of our brand new file. So old file, new file. I'm going to take the edges down completely. Okay. So once we've done that, we have to be able to establish perimeter. Okay. So I need to make sure that my sides are straight. So I'm keeping contact with the whole entire side. I'm keeping contact with the whole side. We're, we're going to have kind of a tapered not a fully coffin nail, but a kind of a tapered square. You can see as I'm filing my side, look at how straight my ledge is. My hand file can pretty much touch the whole entire side wall. I'm not going to swivel back and forth. All that's going to do if you do that is round off the edges. Okay, so at this point right here, I want to kind of taper the front end. So I'm going to angle my file. And what that's going to do is it's, it's going to kind of create a rounded kind of square, squivel shape. So again, one, two, three. And then what I want to be able to do from underneath, and I want to be able to show you guys this, right? So since I was able to remove all that excess, see how the file is parallel to the finger. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the extension dead straight from the end of the growth channel. So the only way to be able to do that is lining it up at the lowest point and filing up and continuously filing up until my hand file reaches the corner. And as you're going to see, boom, I'm going to have great extension from the end of the growth channel all the way out. I have perfectly straight sidewall all the way out to that point. The easiest way is to take the client's hand and turn it to the side. Don't turn your body. Turn the hand to the side just like this, right? You're going to notice even with this, if I line it up at the lowest point and I file up and I continuously file up, once I get to the lower arch, right, I'm going to be able to, again, build really nice straight extensions coming all the way out. The, the, the practice... The practice hand is a great tool uh, for, for those of you guys that are learning how to do nails. Um, you're going to be able to file, especially when you're learning how to use your electric file. You don't use drills. If you want to drill, you can go to Home Depot. You can buy a block of wood and a bucket of screws, and you can practice drilling all day long. We don't drill. We electric file. It's intended, right? The, the use of the electric file is intended to protect your body is a pro, right? So repetitive motion, if you're doing this all day long, it's only a matter of time before you end up with carpal tunnel syndrome. For those of you guys that are learning this, this trade, you have to remember that this tool, again, it's not the tools that do damage, it is the fools that do damage. So you have to understand that in order to be a nail ninja, you have to be able to operate your electric file 
with precision so that you don't, again, do damage to your own wrists, shoulders, and back, but as well as the clients that you're working on. So I'm going to turn this up to about, I say about 12 or 13,000 RPMs. And you're going to notice that when I'm looking at the side profile, I'm going to be able to work over my upper arch to basically create a great shape, right? So as I'm looking down the body, I want to create a, a natural shape where most of the apex is going to be through that area. So that's part one. Part two is looking down the barrel of the nail. And you're going to notice, again, if I'm coming underneath, we have a level of C-curve that's going to be even. It's a little bit thick. That's fine. What I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to work through the body in one direction towards myself, towards myself, again, trying to get the C-curve as even as possible. I do not do this. I do not go side to side. If you go side to side, you're going to basically the bit is going to just wrap around the nail. And it's really going uh, to be very, very hard to control, okay? So what we're doing is we're working through the body in one direction, one direction, one direction, all the way through. And then you're going to notice when I'm going around the cuticle area, right? It's the same exact thing. I have position with my hand, I'm going around the perimeter, around the perimeter, around the perimeter in one direction. Then I'm gonna follow through the rest of the nail. Most of the bulk, as you can see, has been taken down. I'm done. I don't need to sit there and file for like 20, 30 minutes. It literally takes me less than 30 seconds to get the bulk off of the nail, which is going to set me up for precision hand filing. Your hand file is designed, right, to not only shape, but your hand file is designed to refine the rest of the nail into absolute perfection. So once I'm done doing that, I want to be able to work around the perimeter of the nail to get this as tight as I can, right? If your fingers get stuck on the back end, it's going to lift, meaning there's a ledge. You have to be able to file it into perfection so that you don't have those ledges, right? So once I'm done filing around the perimeter, which shouldn't take me that long, it doesn't matter whether you're working with gel or acrylic, Again, you're, you're barely running it around. And I'm not, my, the angle of my hand file is not like this. The angle of my hand file, you have to imagine, I'm literally only using that much space on the hand file to get around the perimeter of the nail. So once I'm done doing that, I'm going to divide this into two sections. I'm literally going to file down the side here, right? Down this side, notice how I'm holding the file from the top, coming down one direction, one direction. And then this side here, I have my finger on top, I have all the surface area to work with. I'm not going to pick at it, I need to have control, meaning I have to go into the nail, let it fall. And look, every time I go into the nail, it's going to basically naturally fall into place, boom. Right, so once this is all done, then the last step is to actually look at it from the customer's perspective. So let's go ahead and raise this up. And then what we are going to do is we're going to look at it from here. So what I wanna be able to do is look down the customer's perspective. We wanna be able to shape the free edge so that it's even from both sides. I wanna look down the client profile I'm gonna make a peace sign. I'm gonna rest my hand file on top. And what we're going to do is we're going to surf the surface so that we're able to file this into flawless perfection, right? So you can see once we're done, let's go ahead and dust this off. All right. My sidewalls, look how, again, look how straight they're going to be. You can see the natural arch. When you're looking down the barrel of the nail, it's going to be completely even from side to side. Again, complete, again, straight sides all the way through. I have a nice even C curve all the way through. And what we want to be able to do once we're done with the nail is get a little bit of protein bond onto the surface. And what this is going to do, it's going to make sure that the top coats are not going to chip. And so last but not least, let's go ahead and take our 
finish shell, and we're going to apply a nice even coat again from cuticle to free edge. You can see the lovely dimension that you're going to get inside the nail, right? And that is all again just with clear acrylic and some mylar inside the nail. Easy way of again creating custom looks. Um, what's really going to separate your work from everybody else is the way that you shape your nails, right? So, hope this helps. Um, that's this finished gel. It is finished gel. All right, for those of you guys that are interested in basically classes, make sure to get a hold of Ray Bracamontis here at home office www.youngnails.com, 1-800-777-9170. Again, 1-800-777-9170. Um, he'll be able to get you guys all the information for upcoming Zoom classes for all, you, for all you nail enthusiasts as well as pros. For all the pros, if you guys are interested in coming out and learning to take your skills to another level, make sure, again, to get information on OWC. Appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you at the next nail school. Subscribe channel now. Subscribe channel now. Sub and subscribe to channel.